Judicial Conduct Tribunal has found Western Cape Judge President John Lope guilty of gross misconduct. Lope was accused of trying to influence two judges to rule in favor of former President Jacob Zuma in a constitutional court case about the seizure of evidence related to the arms deal by the now defunct Scorpions. The matter dates back to 2008. The Judicial Services Commission will now decide Lope's fate. Advocate Paul Hoffman is with Accountability Now and joins us from Cape Town to talk more about this. Always good to have you on, Advocate. So we sit here tonight with a judge president found guilty of gross misconduct more than a decade since the beginning of this controversy. Can he continue uh, to serve as judge president while the next phase of the process goes ahead? Well, he will certainly think that he can, I'm afraid, uh, Timber Keely, and thank you for the opportunity. What is going to happen now is that the award of the tribunal is going to be studied by the full Judicial Service Commission with a view to seeing whether they agree or disagree with the finding of gross misconduct. If they do agree, then the next step in the process is for the National Assembly to put the removal of Judge President Schlorpe to the vote and if a two-thirds majority of the members of the National Assembly vote in favor, that is the only way in which any judge can ever be removed from office uh, on, on the grounds of uh, gross misconduct. The uh, likelihood is that Judge Slorpy, having fought every inch of the way since 2008, will, will, will seek to, to litigate the, the outcome not only of the um, co conduct uh, tribunal's award, but also of any steps that the Judicial Service Commission takes against him. The only uh, light on the horizon at this stage is that it, the president has a discretion to suspend uh, Judge President Schlorpe while the mm. rest of the process unfolds. So if it happens that the Judicial Service Commission, as it should, agrees with the tribunal's finding, then it ought immediately to tell the president that it recommends, because it has to give him advice on this, Advocate that Hoffman. it recommends that he be... He be um, you're losing the, the, the sound. No, I'm hearing you. I just wanted to come in there on the point that you were making about how the president has the discretion to possibly suspend the Western Cape judge president. And I'm just thinking to myself, I would imagine that that is the least likely option at this stage, just given the political element to the Chopper matters, because when you look at what's going on with the ANC and the issues about who is for the Cyril Ramaphosa camp and who is for the former president, Jacob Zuma, whose name is central in the Chope matter, Ramaphosa would indeed be ca caught up in further political controversy, wouldn't he, if he just immediately moved to announce a suspension? Uh, he, he, he cannot immediately move to announce a uh, suspension. He has to do it on the advice of the Judicial Service Commission. That's the way Section 177 of the Constitution wow. is worded. But I would suggest, contrary to the position wow. you're taking, that with the judiciary under siege at the moment, and in order to protect its dignity, its effectiveness, and its impartiality, it's imperative that if he's not prepared to stand down, Judge Schlorpe should be put on suspension without delay. Because any time that he spends on the bench from now on with the finding uh, uh, behind, under, under his uh, disciplinary record, is, 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 is going to lead to all manner of problems in the administration of his division and in the, the adjudication of disputes that he sits in. So um, I, I would think that the president will be hard pressed not to suspend should the Judicial Service Commission agree with the findings of the tribunal. I suppose then the judge president could argue, as he's done already publicly, that 
even with this long-standing controversy hanging over his head, the, the court that he oversees, uh, he said, runs effectively. There's little to no backlog as far as the dispensation of justice. So why would this separate element then interfere with the day-to-day -day running of the courts? Well, um, there, there are other complaints uh, pending against him relating to him assaulting one of the junior judges, to him interfering with the deputy uh, in, in the deputy judge president in, in the uh, conduct of her duties, um, bullying and really a, a cleavage on that bench between those who are pro schlope and those who are anti schlope some of the judges have been able to stand up and say that his uh, leadership of the bench is intolerable. Others seem to be prepared to, uh, to tolerate it because they uh, fear that he will somehow outlive all of the um, disciplinary proceedings that have been taken against him as he has done since 2008. Mm. And of course, the, the judge, when he appeared at the hearings late last year, had said that he did not seek to influence Justices Jafta and Gabinde. He says he had conversations more on principle about of the uh, discussions that they were having around the case rather than uh, the facts and merits and seeking to direct them to rule in a particular way. Where is the line between those two positions? How clear is it? Now, I, I think that uh, uh, your question is a, is a good one, and I think that the tribunal has dealt with it very thoroughly. Uh, he conceded that it wouldn't be proper for him to discuss his own finding with the judges who are sitting in appeal against the uh, finding that he has made, and he couldn't produce a basis for distinguishing that from the situation in which he seeks to uh, discuss somebody else's finding with the judges who are sitting in the appeal. It's simply not on, and it's a reflection on his uh, lack of uh, background and experience in the practice of law. Yeah, I'm afraid he got promoted too far too fast and didn't know the rules of the game uh, by the time he felt free to, uh, to, to interfere with the workings of the Constitutional Court when he should never have even considered. All right, Advocate Paul Hoffman with Accountability Now, thank you so much for your time tonight.